So I want to ask you, what came first, the chick or the coop? Hi, it's Heidi with Broad Meadow Farm and today is all about chickens. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen a picture or a little video with this little guy and a bunch of his or her little friends. And the age old question is, what should you get first? Should you get your coop ready or should you get your little chicks? And probably you should get your chicken coop ready first. Unfortunately for me, this little one, whether it's a hen or a rooster, I'm not quite sure yet. I found an amazing deal from a neighbor just down the road and I have 27 little chicks that are in our garage waiting for our coop to be ready. So today, let's chat a little bit more about what is needed in a coop so that these little guys, once they get bigger, are all safe and prepared for when they go outside. So here behind me in our garage is what's called a brooder box. And a brooder box is a really safe place for chicks to be. And what it allows is that they can be safe, they can be warm, they can have access to food and access to water. Now when you have little chicks, they tend to crowd together and get really agitated when you walk in the room or you go to feed them. So there's a couple key little things that you need to know about a brooder box. And the first is you wanna make sure that you never ever have a 90 degree corner in your, your space, whether it's here in this box behind me or if it's in a designated space out in your coop. And I'll show you what I mean. So over here in the corner of my coop, I've nailed some cardboard it's got a nice angle here. And what happens is when the chicks all crowd together, you can see here, they're kind of crowding over there. When you have that nice angle on there, they cannot get together in a heap and they can't get trampled in the corner. If you have that nice sharp corner, what will happen is all of those chicks, they're just gonna jump on each other and the bottom one on the pile could get crushed and killed. So the other thing that we have going on here this here is a heat lamp and it's got a red bulb in it. Beauty of having a red bulb is that if for some reason a chick picks or um, they peck at each other and there is a little bit of a wound, they're not gonna see blood. Now you don't want to have your chicks attacking each other which is why you wanna make sure you have more than enough room for your chicks. And this brooder box is definitely on the small side and the biggest reason that it is small is that we are probably a day or so away from getting them out into the big coop. Now the big coop is got lots of room and it's just about ready and we'll go over what you need in a coop to make sure that your chicks and then later your chickens are definitely safe. So also down here we've got access to chicken food and this here is their waterer. You can see they've got some water. They'll need some fresh water here when we're done chatting. So they're actually gonna go through probably quite a bit of food and water, more than you would ever think they would. And you wanna make sure that you always have access to food and water for them when they are little. The last thing you want to, for them is to die of either starvation or of dehydration. And when you get your chicks, here. You can see this one's quite a big one. But when you get your fresh little chicks, you wanna make sure you dip their beak right into the water. That way they know where they're gonna get water. So if you order chicks from a hatchery and you pick them up at a drop location or maybe the post office, as you pull those little chickies out of the box, you wanna make sure you take their head and dip it right into the water so they know what they're looking for. And when you have fresh little chicks, what you're gonna be feeding them is chick starter. Now, if you order chicks, again, like I said, from a hatchery, if you get a vaccine for Merix or coccidiosis, you wanna make sure you do not use medicated feed because it kind of cancels that out. Now, these little guys here came from a lady down the road who hatched them herself. So she did feed them medicated feed for the first couple weeks. Now, you'll want to feed chick starter for probably, I don't know, up to about four to six weeks. Let's have a look at the bag. So if you look here, feeding instructions. Feed this 21% poultry starter from hatch to 42 days of age, and then you can switch to poultry grower. And that's really important. 
These are laying hens, so you will follow that instructions. Now, if I were feeding birds that were going to be meat birds, you can see here it says feed only till 28 days and then go to poultry grower. And that's because your meat birds grow at a much faster rate. So I've probably got a week or two left on this poultry starter and then I will switch here to this 16% poultry grower. So one thing to note, when you do have your heat lamp in there, you can see how they're sort of huddling a little bit underneath here. So that means that they're needing some of that heat. But you can see some of these birds are on kind of the perimeter. They are definitely not overheated. They're just resting over here. And they're actively running around and having a good time, then you know you've got that heat lamp at the right height. So we're out here now. This is going to be our coop. We con are converting a shed from my uncle and we put this screen door on. It's actually one that came from the house on the back of the garage. We replaced the old wooden door and this screen door with a new one that actually has a window in it. So let's go in. So one of the biggest things you want to uh, to know about a coop is you want to make sure you've got a good structure that can keep you out of the elements. Now we do live in Alberta and it gets really really cold out here and so you can see behind us we have actually insulated and put vapor barrier on this coop. So what that vapor barrier is going to do is it's going to just an extra layer that keeps that cold air and the moist warm air inside from pooling and condensation and then we are actually doing our best. We're quite frugal. We're using extra plywood from around the building site and we're going to put plywood up on the walls. A really, really important factor in a coop, even more than insulation, is ventilation on a coop. You want to make sure that you get all of that moisture out the roof. So we will be putting one of those more whirly bird ventilation I'm not sure exactly. I'll put a picture down here so you have an idea. We want to make sure that in the winter we get all that moisture out. It's super important so that once you've got your birds in here that they don't get frostbite in the winter. If you've got a super cold coop with great ventilation, they can cope with super cold temperatures. What they can't cope with is super cold temperatures and high moisture. That's just a breeding ground for disease. Also in your coop, you want to make sure you have access to food and to water. I have often hauled water from a house, hauled water from a hydrant or a garden hose, but make sure that you have access to water. And in the winter, if you have below freezing temperatures, you want to have access to electricity so that you can have a heated water bowl. So we've done our heated water of one of two ways. We've used a heated electric dog dish the only problem I have with that one is though that the chickens, they make a huge mess of it. They hop up onto the side, they get their poop in the water, they splash water everywhere. So my number one thing that I really like to do is I like to use a rubber uh, feeding trough and then I put a bucket upside down over it with little slots so the water will come out and then I use a de-icing cable. I'll see if I can find that and I'll show you what that looks like. Another huge important thing for raising chickens is you want to make sure that you are predator proof. So this coop as is right now is completely predator proof because there's no way that they can get into my coop. But you're going to have an, a trap door. So you can see here we've got the start. This here is going to be a door that's going to go out into the outdoor run once we eventually build that. Once we get that, that means that predators have access to the inside of my pen. So I will let them out in the morning. At night, I will close that trap door so that nobody can get in during the evening. A lot of your predator issues and pressure comes after dark. And so you want to make sure that you have a great run that a fox can't dig in, a skunk can't dig in, You'll want to consider maybe some overhead protection from hawks and ravens. Yes, ravens can also pick off your little baby chicks like crazy. The last one that we have issues with is probably weasels. And so that's five predators, foxes, weasels, skunks, hawks, ravens. And you actually have to think about dogs. Is your own dog going to be a problem with your birds? 
So while we put this screen door here, this is not enough insulation for the little chicks to be out here yet. So what we'll end up having to do is we're gonna put a, more of a insulated winter type door on the inside. And then here, if you can see behind me, we've got a bit of an interior wall. So I kind of had an idea. Our last coop at our previous location was just all open. And when you opened that outside door, you always had to watch to make sure the chickens didn't run out. So on this coop, I wanted to make sure that I had an interior wall. So I'm standing here, you can see, there's the door and we've got about four feet to what this is going to be an interior wall this here is an opening we're going to have a screen door like a chicken wire door just so that the birds that are on this side can't access this vestibule behind me here i'm going to have shelving up here so that allow me to put my baby chick waterers my chick feeders and any chicken paraphernalia right there then I'll be able to stack my bags of feed here. And then over here on this wall space, I want to be able to build two brooder boxes mounted on the wall. Actually considering doing is right here. Let's, this area here, we're going to build our nest boxes and we'll have them actually open up here to this vestibule area. And then I want to be able to have like a hinge so that we can access the eggs from this side, or we can come back over through that door, and then here we'll have the nest boxes so we can access them here to clean out all of the straw. So there you have it. This is our new chicken palace, and I look forward to keeping you updated on all of the, the things that we're doing here in the chicken house. So if you're interested in more chicken information, make sure you leave a comment down below. I'd be glad to answer your questions in a future video. And yeah, chickens are so much fun. They're really good for you to start introducing animals to your children if you have children. They also are kind of addicting to the point where you want to have a dark colored egg, you want to have a pink egg, you want to have a green egg, and you start looking for some more fancy varieties. But once you delve into the fancy variety chickens, they start to get a little bit pricey. So for right now, we are focusing on barnyard mix. One thing I like about a mixed breed heritage bird is they are extremely durable. So as we get along in the future, I'll be sure to update you as I the chicks get bigger. They're kind of in that funny teenage stage where they still have some fuzzy downy feathers, but they're starting to get some real feathers so once they're fully feathered and all of that little downy fluff is gone then I can bring them out here and they'll be able to have a lot more room so if you are interested in knowing a little bit more or following along on our chicken journey click that like button and leave me a comment down below with all of your chicken questions so do you raise chickens I'd love to know what kind of breeds you have in your flock it's gonna be really exciting to see what we end up with and I'm certainly gonna take you along for the ride. So I'd love for you to click that like button down below and uh, follow us along on this journey. We'll see you next time.